Hi guys and welcome to Dembon here. In this video I'll explain the new mechanic to mob spawning that got introduced in 20w18a snapshot for the nether update and show how it can be used to create a perimeter conditions without doing pretty much anything. Or for example build a nether fortress farm without spawn proofing of the nether. Enticing? Listen up. So last time we have suggested that the existing mob spawning mechanics can cause some serious landscaping problems in cells and valleys. I have suggested that this could be remedied by balancing the mob composition and even out the spawn chances between biomes, however Moang decided to solve it with a completely new mechanic instead. Forget the recent redstone changes. We haven't had such a significant change in mob spawning mechanic for a while, possibly even since notch times. Well, Technically this new system is a significant curveball thrown for technical mob farming. The interesting part is that it's only implemented for certain mobs and only in certain biomes, which means that, at least for now, it's actually something that we can use to our advantage. But before we see what changed, we have to see how mob spawning worked so far. And even at this point, this is still inapplicable to most mobs in most locations. So mobs spawn freely around the players, only limited by the total mob cap, which is the limit of mobs that, when met, prevent new mobs from spawning. Other than that, the mobs can spawn pretty much unrestricted given their spawning conditions are met, like for example it's dark. And the game is actually really quick in filling up the missing spots in mob limits. This means a couple of things. First of all, most of the time the game is actually not spawning any mobs, which is Good for performance, because in typical scenario mob cups are filled most of the time. But second of all, if we manage to block mob spawns anywhere around the play area where mobs can technically spawn, which is 128 blocks away from them, we can use this fast spawning mechanic to build efficient and I must say very satisfying mob farms. So in this case we'll be using this platform as a mock up of the actual farm. The drawback of this system is that we have to be very meticulous in blocking potential spawning spaces since even if you miss a cave or two, mobs will start spawning in them and keep blocking the mob cap for the mobs in your mob farm. And the odds are not that when you block 50% of the spaces you have 50% of performance all out of your farm. It's mostly like blocking 95% of the spots will give you at most like 5% of your total efficacy of your contraption. The odds are rather brutal on that, but because we can get mobs to spawn rather quickly, farms can be fast, so it's a double-edged sword. There are at least three obvious solutions to the problem of having a fully controlled mob situation. First is to move away from any area that can potentially spawn mobs, making sure that only your farm is in this virtual 256 block diameter sphere. This works very well in some places like the end and above the nether or if you want to build a quick and dirty mob farm but it doesn't give you much flexibility besides that. I mean we can't build a fortress farm or a slime farm this way, however this method arguably doesn't use any bugs and exploits in the game and it's 100% pure survival vanilla friendly, meaning that we don't have to use any extra tools to help us with that, but limits us to certain locations. Another option is to remove all the terrain. It can be done in a legit fashion, either mining or blowing it all up, which can be very tedious, but most people these days do that job by blowing up the entire terrain using TNT duping. This does remove all potential spawning spaces and give full control over the area, but arguably this kind of blowjobs can be considered unethical and exploited. However, it still can be considered a 100% survival technique. Just using the quirks and the bugs in the game, plus it ruins the environment. The third method is to find and block all spawning spaces using the spectator mode or by using mods or commands either in your original world or in a copy of it knowing the seed or having a world backup. That is my preferred method, although some purists can argue that even knowing the seed of your world is already illegal survival activity. Doing this like TNT duping is in the eye of the beholder. I prefer that over the TNT duping primarily because it preserves the original Minecraft terrain and honestly looks so much better than a hole in the world. Since the mob composition in the new 1.16 Souls and Valley was composed mainly of gas, so instead of fiddling with the mob cap setup or mob composition to solve this problem, Moyang has introduced a new mechanic and is currently only applies to all the mob types spawned in Souls and Valleys and to the Endermen in Warped Forest. To demonstrate it, I created this flat world with warped forest biome that will help us to see what's going on. 
Now, if an Enderman spawns, it forms some sort of a field of energy, or what's called a spawn potential, around it that prevents any other Enderman to spawn anywhere where we don't have this white concrete. Any other mob is fine to spawn here, and only Endermen are affected by this field. The thing is, if we spawn another Enderman, we can observe that this new combined field that's formed from them is larger than each of those separate. And the reason is the fact that the spawn potential field of all the mobs add up, increasing the total value and impact on larger area. Now we need to move even further away to get a third Enderman to spawn. This ensures that not only we are limiting the total number of mobs in the area, but also maintaining a proper distancing of entities. We will not be able to get any pack to spawn, and with the current settings that they have applied, we won't be able to even reach the mob cap. So if we turn on the spawning, yeah, we typically should be getting 10 to 11, 12 mobs. And as you can see, that number of mobs fills pretty much the spawning potential all around the player. And that's actually something that we could expect in the actual nether terrain. The thing is, this visualization I made here works on a flat plane, but this mechanic works in all three dimensions. So if all these endermen down there, if I may check, just manually, yeah, the spawning potential here is way above 0.08, which means that no mobs will be able to spawn even where I'm standing. Uh, 0.08 is now the threshold for both warped forests and souls and valleys. What this means? This means that we will not be able to have tons of mobs to spawn, that's for sure. But more than that, we would not be able to even have more than one or two mobs to spawn at a given general location. So if we would like to build a mob farm, of some sorts, which is typically a self-contained structure, it will be very ineffective because we could have only one or two mobs max at it at the time. The mob farm would need to be either very very large or just broken down into pieces. The other thing which is very important is that this mechanic will probably be used in the future for other more unique mobs, to spread them apart and limit their numbers. But it'll be quite silly to assume that it'll be applied more broadly to replace current mechanics, which are by limiting the spawns by mob caps only. First of all, running it across all the mob spawns would be quite expensive from the compute standpoint, and simply there's just no need to replace the existing mechanic for general mobs and in other biomes. It seems that the main reason was to introduce souls and valleys in warped forests as those creepy quiet places in the nether without getting rid of all the spawns like it's done with the mushroom island biome. And now the new music that we have with these biomes actually match them. So that's pretty cool, I guess. But the cool part is that other mobs will be still be able to spawn in here or in the neighboring biomes. And with a little bit of careful planning, you can cook up yourself another perimeter without doing almost anything, besides building the farm or dealing with the structure mobs themselves. If you locate your spawn sphere in Warped Forest or Soul Sand Valley, each mob will be preventing other mobs from spawning nearby, as well as we'll be dealing with at most 10 of those hostile mobs, leaving the other 60 from the mob cap to spawn in your designated area, which would make for a very decent farm. And with one extra trick I'll show you at the moment, you can actually achieve a perfect perimeter for a gold farm, hoglin farm, or a full-on nether fortress farm. To show that on an actual example, I have created this world here, which is Nothing special, just my seed that I'm using for my survivor world since 1.8, so nothing out of ordinary. And to help us view some potential locations for some farms, I created this tool here. I call it tentatively amidst, or it's more like a journey map. I don't know the legal implications of these names. Something like that, that will help us to navigate across the terrain. So now it's in 1 to 16 scale, so one block is here one chunk in the actual nether. So you can see the biomes, you can see the structures, and with a berry, we can just hop between the actual nether and the map. So let's, for example, quickly check the portal. As you can see, we are at the portal. Let's go back, maybe look at the bastion nearby. There you go. You're here in the bastion. So maybe go back, let's check this nether fortress. As you can see, they're nicely their layout, which is pretty cool. Also, the fences here are just left for the blaze spawners, so we can, for example, try to get to this one. Like so. Pretty cool stuff. But you're here not to see the cool things, but to check a few farm setups. So, this thing, yeah. So this ring actually tells us the area that the player will be loading that the mobs can technically spawn. So this one, for example, would be a perfect location for a fortress farm. 
So if you, for example, teleport to the center of it, it will be right smack in the middle of the Ender Crossroad, right in the middle of a Soul Sand Valley, as I said. Perfect location for a fortress farm, but for the first, I wanted to show something else, how to select a spot for a farm that uses a different biome, like a gold farm that you can build below the bedrock. I mean, yes, obviously, in the nether, you can always build above the bedrock as well as below it, and you wouldn't need to condition your area anyways, but it's more like an illustration that it still can be done under. Besides, some good gold farm designs, like the one that I presented last time, do require some spawn proofing below the bedrock. Not much, but still some, and if we select a good location, we could still build it above the bedrock and limit the spawn proofing work to the minimum. Oh, and by the way, this terrain here was generated in 20W18A. So you can notice that, for example, there is not that many warp forests. In 19A, terrain has been tweaked with warp forests, souls and valleys and basal deltas growing quite a bit in size over the crimson forests and other ways. And also all the layout for fortresses and bastions has changed completely. So just to let you know. The good news is that we will be getting more of those useful biomes that we were just talking here today. So here we are, a good location I found for a natural pigment gold farm. It's in the center of this funky looking soul sand valley, jetting out into these other biomes, which is cool. So we can position our sphere, so it'll be a perfect location for a farm. If you, for example, want to build a hoglin farm and not to go above the bedrock, we just need to find a similar location with a crimson forest instead, like we have, for example, over here. That would be good as well. So when, for example, we'll be standing over here, we'll just be loading just a portion of the Crimson Forest, and the rest will be in Solson Valley, and that's it. So let's check the pigment farm that we have done. So, perfect landing. We are here in the middle. I select an AFK spot with a player. Nothing special. But as we can see, there's nothing done in the valley itself. So let's go into the spectator. And as you can see, the lime sphere here shows the spawn range for the player so that no mobs can spawn outside of it due to the presence of an FK player 128 blocks away. And this rough boundary here is the biome boundary between the nether waste and the soul sand valley. So just here we have this little fragment of the nether waste biome. So as you can see, the soul sand valley has a few occasional mobs, but the vast majority of the mob cap is located in our gold farm without any efforts in proofing the soul sand valley. I mean, we have to protect this opening over here, so we have a few spots here and there in range, but our farm would be working decently even without it. But that's something that we would need to be concerned about. But that's only the small portion. You may argue that it's still a pan's perimeter because we still have a few gas skeletons inside of it, but I'll show you a cool trick that you can use around these mobs to create a perfect perimeter, which we can do in the other example, which will be the another fortress farm. So I've pasted my fortress farm here as an example and just went around the entire fortress spawn proofing everything that belonged to the fortress. The empty space here for the farm is not really needed, it's just an artifact of copy pasting from another world, but you might just as well just build this farm into the terrain, that's gonna be fine as well. The farm itself, in general, these are just five spawning floors in the range of the nether bridge crossroad and all within the fortress boundary where we have the flying machines pushing mobs of the platform into the player that's AFK and smacking them every second. Nothing fancy. The mobs will not be spawning in the soul sand valley, but they will still will be spawning in the fortress itself. So that's something that we will need to take care of anyways with any fortress location. Spawn proofing wise, as you can see, I just use buttons outside of the corridors and lava to spawn proof it. You can use slabs, pressure plates, buttons, what have you to protect it. But if we turn on the overlays of the fortress, we can see that whatever is outside of it, I'm not even touching it. And that's really not much comparing to the actual terrain inside the player reach. And the farm itself works like a charm. Two important things are left to note. There is no regular skeleton spawning even in the fortress farm. Only pigment, blazes and obviously wither skeletons. The reason is skeletons are still part of the souls and valley as well. This means that being in here, they still adhere to the potential based spawning rules so they are not spawning in the fortress. This means that the farm will be yielding a little bit less drops, as usual, because we have less spawns, but more of the useful stuff. So coal and wither skeleton skulls from wither skeletons and blaze rods from blazes. At this point, the farm is producing almost five skulls per minute, which is crazy for such a simple design. So if you go outside, the other trick, as you may notice, there isn't actually any mobs to spawn in here, not even these few gusts. 
And the reason for that is not the mobs in our mob farm. Clearly, there is tons more spawning spaces outside of the farm, so the farm would not win for spawns. The thing is, all Soul Sand Valley mobs count towards a spawn potential, which includes these shivery boys, striders. So by collecting about 15 of them right here, we can see with my pew pew potential gun that this increases the spawning potential not just here in the middle where it's super high, but if we check even pretty much around the entire farm and the entire perimeter preventing all the Soul Sand Valley mobs to spawn, including hostels. Now I have to say that this may very well still change at this point. Nothing seems to be set in stone, I hope they are not watching, so don't tell anybody. But even if this gets removed, even a 60 mob mob cap fortress farm will beat with the effort that you need to put into it any previous fortress farm setups. So effort for reward, that still would be a win-win scenario. In this case, you just would not need any of those shivery boys here. And on that note, that would be it for today. What's your opinion about this new mechanic? So far, I think it's good. It looks super fancy with all this spawn field, so I think it might be used not f just for these two cases here in the future. If it's used sparingly, either for a specific mob going forward, like a naturally spawned boss mob, or for specific biomes like warped forests and souls and valleys to create this climate that they form, it's fine, especially if we could mix in traditional pack spawning limited only by the mob cap for structures and other areas like we have seen today, so we can build the farms without the grind and the cheat of preparing perimeters. Obviously for things like a hoglin farm or a pigman farm, you might as well just go above the bedrock, but that wouldn't be possible with a fortress farm for example. And this would definitely cut down on the grind to just building the farm and spawn proofing the fortress area alone. Also to have an area in the nether where you can just don't worry about the mobs in general for other projects that don't involve mobs. A place like an overworld mushroom biome as well is rather sweet. So if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave me a like and if you are not subscribed already we just have reached 100,000 subscriber mark on this channel so you can just join our 6 digit subscribers club and I will really appreciate you for that. And let me know what you think about the new spawning mechanic in the comment section below. Not gonna lie, looked scary at first, but with a good mix of old and new system, you can actually create a really decent setup and having to skip on the nether fortress farm grind, it's a big win overall. So on that note, see you in the next one, bye bye!